as we, as we do. I'm early tonight. What's going on? I got my coffee and now it's being taken off me. No good. Anyway, the guests aren't here yet. Uh, Mitch, I'm oh, here. Jono's here. Hello, sir. Yes, hello. I'm oh. not sure what's on the program tonight. Oh, well, I'm about to tell you if I can find it. Thank you, Jess, for this, but she took my coffee. I'm dirty about that. Uh, she started to flirt big time with me and other guys. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Anyone you know? Well, it could be everybody I know. Yeah. Second letter tonight. Should we tear ourselves apart now? Okay. No, the violins, yes. Violins. Yes. Guy writes yeah, in exactly. because he's found the lo love of his life and he's already thinking sour grapes is oh, not going to last. Yes. And the last letter tonight, mate. Before everybody else comes in, wherever they are, my sister came to me last month and confided in me that she and her husband have an open relationship. What's that? Oh, well, it's good if you can get it. I'll give you the tip. Okay. Well, that's what we're talking about. We'll have the guests in here in about 20 seconds. Jono will take his seat. I'll take my seat and we'll see you then. Catch you then. <laughs> Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Oh, so it's time for Sweet and Sour. We're on that one. I'm still talking to the floor manager. Welcome to Sweet and Sour, everyone. Lovely to have your company. Gary Mitchell with you for the next half hour. Let's meet our guest first up. His Honour the Mayor of Bessendine is here. Hello, sir. Hello, Mitch. What are the big issues? Oh, well, everything's going sweet at the moment. Absolutely <laughs> sweet. <laughs> No, no sour here, but there might be a little bit sour yeah, later yeah, on in the panel. Yeah, you're right. Yes. We'll chat more during the break about that. Hello, Alex. Hello, Gary. You've been doing what? I've been an artist in residence. Where at? Um, about three weeks ago, I was at the um, the uh, Cat Breeders Association. And? And um, how are you, the artist in residence? Well, at the where, cat I, got, where, Association? where I got my cat from, um, the breeder there told me about um, why don't I come and volunteer. And then she says, why don't you be an artist in residence? So, do you want to see what I did? Come on, quick one. I'm going to show you very quickly. Quick, quick. This is one of the breeder's cat. It's a. So, as the artist in residence, you were sitting there oh, drawing. Wow. So I drew this. Hold it up. Yep, 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 yep. There's the little. Nice looking meow. Classy. That's a little. Yeah, that's a little British blue short hair. A blue British short hair. So I was drawing that and um, um, that's what I do. Pet portraits as well as portraits. Bambi, and have you got a... Yes, I'm sure you do. At home. <laughs> um, welcome and congratulations, I believe. Thank you. When did you get married? Uh, about a month ago. You didn't even whisper anything like that when you were on the panel last. Yeah, I don't know. It all just World happened wind. so quickly. I don't know. My life's, my life's crazy. What's his name? Tell us about him quickly. His name is Gunnar Lefist. He's German. Gunnar Lefist. Gunnar Lefist. Bambi Lefist. Gunnar Lefist. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Gunnar Lefist. made my own surname and there's no other Lefist in Australia or the world. So oh, you've I just looked, my you've own looked up all the white I googled. Pages. I, googled I googled. Not okay. all of them. All right. Some of them. Welcome back to the show. Good to have you. <laughs> Hello, you. Jen. Hi. How are you going? What music, movies have you been in? Um, I did play an extra in Greenfield, the one that premiered last yeah, week. Yeah, last yeah. week. Was yeah. Any good? Yeah, it was excellent. Very good. Excellent. Great turnout. Anything coming up? Um, side sweet and sour. <laughs> Not too much sure at the did. moment. All right. <laughs> good to have you here, Jen. Thanks. What's this? Second or third time on the show? Second time on the show. Second time on the show. Time on the show. Last all right. Last time what? Yep. We're on. Yeah. Together. All, we're all girl panel. All girls. Almost Ooh. all girl. You got two you of us. You all though. girls on you. Did We're keeping up to the team here, Jenna. So here we go. First letter, dear Mitch. About four months ago. My best friend and I were at a party. Uh, we both had our eye on a girl and figured some friendly competition was in order to try and seduce her. She had loved the attention of both of us, but in the end I decided to give in to my friend. As much as I was attracted to the girl, I didn't mind because my friend hasn't had the best run with women lately. Since that party, they've been together and everything seemed fine until recently. She started to flirt big time with me and other guys, and I was out recently saw her with a group of mates and she was laughing and joking with some guy at the bar. Clearly he was wanting to get into her pants and was plying her with alcohol and she wasn't saying no. It was a shameful display but I left before I saw her actually kiss the guy. How do I let my mate know his girlfriend's a dud? Surely he'll think I'm just jealous. Should I just let him find out on his own? And it comes to us from Terry of Buxton 
in Queensland, and we're going to his honour, the Mayor, first. Jono? Uh, yes, Terry. I think the, uh, the very important part in your letter is, I left before I saw her actually kiss the guy. So, uh, quite frankly, I think you are a little bit jealous. Uh, I'm a very personable person, and believe it or not, I have to bat away people when I'm at functions. I'm, uh, I like to get up and close and personal with people, and she may just be the same. So, uh, you look, if you go and address your friend with, uh, with no basis for an allegation, no allegation. basis for an allegation. <laughs> well, you could potentially just be talking a lot, a cockload of Scheisenhausen. So <laughs> I suggest leave it be. Mm, Alex, is that always the best option anyway? Never say anything, even if you see your, your best mate's missus playing up? What you do know, you do in those situations? I think, in my opinion, I think you're just a jealous, nasty piece of work. Because what happens if you're wrong? No, you know what? <laughs> She's probably at the bar having a good time. That's what really annoys me. When a woman's out there having a good time, that guy she's flirting with could be an old friend, could be her brother, could be her cousin, it could be anybody that you don't know. And you go and you say all your nasty stuff. I mean, like, get a life. You're so jealous that she chose him. And you say, oh, but I let him her have him because blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, she didn't want you and we can see why. What happens if his version is exactly as it is? Surely there's an avenue there. Why? To there's no she proof. Can... She's at a bar, she's having a drink, you don't like she's having bloke. fun I and he's it. all of a sudden tarred her with a brush well, saying... Nothing's happened. He left exactly. Nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. Nothing's she's happened. a tart. Oh. Bambi, you've had experience in this area. What's going on? Is this bloke just playing with figments of his imagination or is, has he got reason to be concerned for his mate? He might have some reason, but if he really wants to be sure, what he should do is just properly confront her and say, do you want me? Are you playing my mate? Try get some answers. I, like, I don't think get she's certainty. doing anything wrong. Oh no, she's laughing and having fun at a bar. Yeah. Shut up, mate. She's having a good time. She's allowed it's to. a bar. Guess what? Bars sell drinks. Yeah. She's drinking them. You're allowed to take Janet. a few drinks, aren't you? You're allowed to do that. Okay. And if he's really that concerned, go up and talk to her direct and just try to get a nice honest answer. Jealousy is a curse. We should talk about that too. Mm -hmm. Jen, figment um, of his imagination? I think he should just like stay out of their business, really. Like, I think he's just overimposing himself in an area where he's probably not invited to be even doing that in the first place. Um, at the very least, it's a four month maximum relationships so who knows if they're even a very early days. boyfriend girlfriend or, or whatever but who yeah knows? he definitely does come across as outrageous. um as a bit jealous yeah maybe yeah. he wants a threesome who knows uh, <laughs> it's, it, does everybody think he's a bit jealous yep oh, absolutely yeah. yeah over there over here okay yeah. what happens if we changed the scenario right. and it was not a young uh, young person's situation and it was someone who was looking at his mate's wife at the bar, etc. But again, do you can see anything. The issue is, if she, the issue is, do you the tell kids. your mate or not tell your mate? Just say, in oh, any, I saw her at, at a bar. Time. Yeah, she looked like she was having fun. End of story. Leave it at that. Yeah, he can just interpret go up it. Just and say, hi, how are you going? And don't make it so covert, you know. Yeah. Like, go up and say, oh, hi, you know. Oh, yeah, how are you going? Never be blah, blah, blah. You know, is people are always up? lurking and yeah, they want to look for the worst in people, you know. And that's how gossip starts. Big difference between having a drink and cheating on your partner. Don't look for the worst. Look for the best. Yeah. Don't presume. Yeah. Right. Mind we'll, your own business. Wait, 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 Mind your own business. Uh, would you do what Bambi's uh, suggesting? Would you always go up and say, "Hey, how he's you going? What are you doing?" He's a good mate. He's that yeah, concerned, and he, he's concerned he's enough to great. send us a letter. And, 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 and you know, oh, accordingly, he he, he he was very close to getting her himself. So then he let her. That's a pretty mate. close relationship. What we didn't discuss is what would happen if the woman actually said, "Oh, please don't tell him." But we haven't got time right. to talk yeah. about that. That's when we come back, we're talking thing. about... Oh, that chap writes in, the love of his life on one hand and becoming a dad on the other hand. When we come back, sweet and sour, don't go away. See you soon. And John is ready too. We're all ready. If you'd like to send us a letter here at Sweet and Sour, send it to the address... There it is on your screen right now, letters at sweetandsour.net.au uh, and you can even look us up on the internet at sweetandsour.net.au Give us a like on Facebook and even tweet us now. And for everyone that does send in a letter, we're going to send you to the movies courtesy of our very gorgeous and glamorous Natalie Cameron. There you go, Madame Bovary, okay. coming to the cinemas very, very, very shortly. And uh, you can even... 
She's wearing purple. We're all wearing purple tonight. You can even like us on Instagram as well, and you'll no, see I'm a whole not. lot of photos of the crew backstage. Here we go. Letter number two for tonight. Hello, Mitch and guests. After two failed marriages, I'm finally with the woman of my dreams. And we've been together now for three years. We became reacquainted after not seeing each other for 25 years. No question, we're in love and it grows. It's like I'm a teenager again with all the bells, whistles and fireworks. It's the same for her. It's passionate, it's paradise, it's perfect. Well, almost. And it's the almost that really has me in a mental spin. You see, like me, she's been married before and she has a beautiful 13-year-old daughter. I've never had kids and it really is, has played on me as all I ever wanted was a couple of kids or at least one. I'm the whole extended family's favourite uncle. All the kids stay with me whenever their parents go away for whatever reason. I'm just a natural dad that just doesn't have kids. I'm happy to play surrogate dad to my partner's daughter, but I'm not her father and she doesn't need another dad because my partner's ex is a great dad. The truth is, my beautiful lover would dearly love to give me a child, but for a whole series of medical reasons, she can't have children now. So I'm torn, and in the back of my head, I know that those same medical issues will unfortunately mean that I will, in all probability, outlive her. At that point, I'll find myself without kids, too old to father any, and without the love of my life. I just don't know what to do. Should we tear ourselves apart now so I can go off and have kids? I'm too old to adopt. I will always love her no matter what happens, but the kids issue is unsettling me enormously, and that's unfair on everyone. It comes to us from Ken of Salisbury in South Australia, and we're going to Jen first. What does he do? He's torn, um, the love of his life, and he still wants to have kids. Ken, I think you just need to leave it alone. Chill. I think that if you're the like, favourite uncle to everyone, why can't you just be happy with that? If you really want to have a child and you can't have one with your current partner, then why don't you think about fostering a child, one that actually needs a parent that would obviously give, that you could give the love to that it needs. I think the world's already overpopulated and I don't think that your desire to have one just because you want one is a good enough reason to leave your partner. But if it's that much of a deal to you, um, be happy being really old with a teenage child because you're obviously over 45, you can't adopt, so um, yeah, I think you've missed the boat. Bambi, why is this man so paranoid about having kids? Why is it the be all end all for some people? I don't know, some people just like to have them, I guess. I don't see the appeal. I like dogs <laughs> myself. You could go buy a whole bunch of dogs. That would make you very happy. You can be papa to a bunch of puppies. That'd be really nice, but I don't know. I do feel a bit sorry for him. You know, he wants some kids for whatever reason. And he can't have them. Um, it's in his head. What does he do? Does he stay with the love of his life? Stay with her. Maybe knock up some random at a bar. I don't know. <laughs> when in doubt, <laughs> there's always avenues. Lay about. You can always. You've go got to options, <laughs> mate. You've got options. He, he does have yeah, options. Good, I that? like Lying Voodoo in, Lounge myself. Really Lots of lay lovely about. ladies there. Voodoo Lounge. Voodoo Lounge in Northridge. But, yeah. Hang on, does he stay attached or does he ditch the woman and go no, to the No, no, he's with the woman of his dreams. So Don't he stays be silly. There. He's staying with her, just going to go knock up a random girl. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that'll make I think I understand that. Year. That'll make the relationship last. <laughs> go on. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah, oh, well, you go on about being passionate and paradise and perfect. You know, you sound pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. You know, like you go on about how you've found the perfect woman and you're so happy and everything's perfect, but you can't have a kid, oh boo hoo. You know, why don't you just be like the perfect uncle, as you said, but um, if, and you don't know what to do, you say, I don't know what to do, get a dog. He doesn't know why what Why don't you just like get a dog kids. and that'll give you something to do. And what was the other thing? I said, teenage, okay, you've got the teenage daughter and she, she's gonna have a child, then you can be the grandfather and then see that child raise up. It's not all about having a little mini you, you know, it's like, Jen was saying there are lots of children out there that are looking for someone to love them and raise them as a child and that's what you can do. It's not about a biological thing, being a father means that you're going to be a father fathering. There's a really good program called The Fathering, Prog program, uh, the fathering Project, it's on 98.5 and it's brilliant. So you know, yeah, you should just stay with the woman of your dreams that you've found because finding that right person is really hard. Jono, he seems obsessed with finding yeah. certainty for his future. 
because he's got it mapped out. If I go here, this will happen. If I go there, that will happen. Life's about an abundance of things happening to you by chance. Dude, you, you never know what's going to happen, Ken. And I have to say, uh, reading your letter and listening to your concerns, a, a song comes to mind uh, <laughs> that I think represents you. And uh, you might want to look it up. It goes something like, you're so vain. You probably think this song is about you. Uh, because you think it's all about you. You've got uh, a wonderful woman, so called the love of your life, who's actually dying, obviously, of a critical illness. Uh, you call yourself a phantom father. Well, I think you're a phantom lover. Uh, and, uh, you know, if this uh, child is so important to you and uh, obviously your love of your life thinks the same, why don't you advertise for a surrogate? Uh, and uh, have a surrogate carry your baby, then you can have a baby. But uh, look, of options. Uh, again, yeah. life isn't just about you, and it is about family. And sometimes things just don't happen the way you want it to. So think of others. Grow up. Yeah, that's true. Goodness me, you've got so that's much in front of you, some... and you're not appreciating what wow. you've got there. When we come back, we're going to talk about open relationships. Do they actually work? We're going to mm. find out and see what the panel says when we come back. Don't go away. More of Sweet and Sour after the break. You know that feeling when you're in a lift with a group of strangers and uh, the lift stops and no one can think of anything clever to say? Sweet and sour's a lot like that. Are we on air? We're on air now. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. We're going straight into the lift. <laughs> Aren't you glad you did that? No. Dear Sweet and Sour, <laughs> look, it's none of my business. This has nothing to do with me, except it probably does, because it has implications for all married couples. My sister came to me last month and confided in me that she and her husband have an open relationship. Apparently, he goes on business trips and has sexual relationships with whoever is available. Well, that's the way I think it works, and she does similarly where, uh, whenever she goes away. The problem for her is that she now has chronic anxiety every time he goes away. When I suggested that, uh, that that's not a marriage, it's just a convenience when any couple has an open relationship, she responded without becoming defensive, and that's mature of her, but suggested that I was culturally biased by the traditional concept of marriage and that open marriage is a reality today and probably the only way the institution will survive in this modern and sexually free world. She's just being human by justifying everything she does. But if this openness is so good, how come it results in anxiety? Where's the commitment to each other in bonking the next good or available thing that comes along? Why even bother to marry if your focus isn't going to be on your, rela on your relationship at home with your partner? Where's the consideration of loving one another and building the bonds of love and family if we're going to be loving everyone? I might seem, as my sister says, very traditionally minded, but I have the same urges and attractions as the next woman. If I'm wrong, I want to know that I should be uh, out there vamping my way through life without any need to develop anxiety like my sister. If I'm right, I'd like the panel to give me some more ammo to lecture my sister. Comes to us from Andrea of Q in Victoria and we're going to... Hello, Alex. Oh, me? OK. No, you're not wrong. You're very, very right. And i tell you why, because everything you said makes sense and it's true. Today, marriage has lost what it's all about because marriage is about a commitment between a man and a woman to love and honour, and well, I don't like where to say love and obey, but it's to love and honour each other in sickness and in health. And that's what the boundary of marriage is, not to go, oh, look, I just don't feel like having you tonight, so I'm going to go and find someone else. And yeah, fine, sweetheart, go and do it. The reason why she's having anxiety is because basically, not all women, I understand that, but there's a lot of women, they're more emotional when it comes to having sex with someone they love. So, of course, him having sex with someone else is going to play on her mind, and that's what I think. So, times are changing. Um, I don't agree with um, how, with, uh, what is that, open marriages? I don't, I don't agree with it, you know, but actually... Why Brad, get married? Remember, that's, I always say, why get married? But remember, Brad Pitt even said, you know, people are not monogamous. So I'm going to be contradicting here. And that's one thing about it, because if you can't make a commitment in a marriage, then why get married? Why get married if you're not going to be? But marriage is a sophisticated notion, and open marriages are just, you know, being even less than cavemen. You can give in to your prime well, allergies well, if got, you want to. And also you've or got you to can worry be about smart it. about things and grow your life. And you don't know. You might, you know, know like there's so many diseases the going around. You just don't know unless, you know... Oh, funny you've you got say to be that. careful I about I had a coffee with a doctor 
um, two days ago who said the incidence of sexually transmitted diseases are in epidemic proportion like oh. the world has never seen at this point it's in time. It's just so free. Amazing. Everything's free and let's just get on. You know, Jono, don't even really know. come on in. Uh, yeah, look, I'm actually going to disagree with Alex on this one. Uh, look, I, I honestly don't have a problem. I, I don't think we need to pigeonhole everybody into one set relationship. Uh, what works for some doesn't work for others. That's and true. Uh, obviously mm. now, potentially if they have had an open relationship, I'll suggest that if there is anxiety at the moment, the trust factor is potentially being broken. Because with an open relationship, I think it's important to always have that trust with one another and always tell one another before anything happens. Uh, otherwise, if that breaks down, then you are really in trouble. And, and again, obviously, sexual urges is, is you know paramount in a marriage, and uh, I have no no issue with people trying to spice that up. Sometimes people get in a third partner, um, you know, to spice the, the the relationship up a little bit. Of course, what you know, you've got a, the sexual urges, whatever works. If you talk together with as a couple, um, and you're happy. Look at that, you're getting me a bit excited. You know, we might turn into an writer's <laughs> show, Alex. Um, uh, and that, that being said, I'll wind up. But I think it's all about uh, if it's an open relationship, you need to be open in your conversation and discussions with one another and if and if one side so, one side suddenly says look I'm not comfortable with this you need to tell the other and put a stop to it that's good yeah, Jen that's pretty good. where's the anxiety coming from um, they could be coming from anywhere there's not enough information in this letter just to prove that it's becoming because of her husband going away so you know her sister diagnosing her with with why it's occurring is a bit of a joke really I think the sister again needs to stay out of her business, Mind her business. Own business. yeah definitely it's um, business. the end of the letter she actually you're actually saying that you are basically going to do what your sister's doing if we say it's okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So why do you want sure. Ammo to grill her if we say it's wrong? I don't get that. So I'm um, sure she won't base it just on what we have to say. Oh, she will. Well, and there's enough divergence on the panel. She'd like more Ammo to give us her sister. Information to give here. Oh, we're good. Mm. I don't Great know whether advice. we're that good. <laughs> All right, Bambi, wrap it up for us. Um, look, two words. Fleshlight. That's what he needs. Fleshlight. Yeah, fleshlight. Flashlight. 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 As in. Flashlight. As in torch. Like, Flashlight. It's like torch. a. It's like a pocket pussy. Oh, flesh it's like a light. fake flesh vagina. Light. Flash. Flesh. Flesh. It's like a fake vagina thing. There you go. It's like a. Oh, you know see, what guys use. Well, sorry, I asked for clarification. Every, I mean. every guy should get one. I go away for work a bit. Um, I'm you, going you away You carry on a flashlight. No, it's no, for guys. It's like a guy's like version scary, of a like vibrator. What do you do with it? You use it. It's like a pocket pussy. Imagine that. A flashlight, is that modelled on anybody's in particular? Uh, yeah, one of my friends has one modelled on hers. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get phone calls tomorrow. <laughs> to let the show get out of hand, you started talking about that rubbish. I'm going to go buy one tomorrow for Flesh my partner because I go away on Friday for You've two weeks. You've just got weeks. married. Yeah, I'm going away and for two weeks. Away. Like, listen. And then, you know, That's we better than him going and out and finding He's not going to do that. Well, what does he need do a flashlight? Because I'm going to be like gone this, for a couple of weeks. Do you like this letter to give away the pair oh, of limited did, edition sons? I wanted to hear what else she had to say. She, you wanted to keep talking. I don't I want to hear shut what up. Bambi was. <laughs> Where is this going? There's Come some on. amazing flashlights out there. Do you need people yeah. trouble with the senses? Do well, trouble with the maybe senses. Maybe we should give away a flashlight as well to Every, the winner of the best letter tonight. Everyone who sends uh, in a letter can get a free tonight. flashlight. <laughs> Which letter do you like to give away the pair of limited edition sonnies courtesy of a long trebes? I'm going to go with letter three. You like yeah, this me one? Me too. Trade in for a flashlight. Yeah, letter Andrea three. Andrea of Q. Jen, what, what do you like? I don't really like any of them, but I'm going to go with letter two. <laughs> letter two? We can look, try and look after the glasses. All right, all right. Oh, beside the panel, Jono? Uh, look, I think letter two, you should, you should get the flashlight. Uh, and letter <laughs> three, I think we should give you the glasses. Yeah. You got letter who? Letter three glasses. Letter three glasses. Letter three. Three glasses. Coming out to Andrea of Q, a pair of limited edition sunnies. We've got to go. And a flashlight. Good night, Jono. <laughs> Bye. Good night, Bye. Alex. Bye. Bye. Good night, Bambi. Night. Good night, Jen. See ya. Thanks for having us in your home tonight, Australia. Thank you, crew. Good night.